name is Jasmine, aka Black Girl Absolute, uh, with special guest, again, as always, Sophia the Cat. Uh, so today, um, we're just going to go over some of the basic materials that any beginner acrylic painter may want to have in their arsenal. Uh, this is for someone if you're, you know, just starting to get into it or you even just want to see if you like it. Uh, this is the video for you. So yeah, let's jump right in. This is actually the second time I'm recording this video because the first time I recorded it, it didn't record the full way. I mean, all that really means is that now I'm just even more prepared for this one, so this one's gonna be really good. <laughs> I, don't, I don't know where she's going. As everyone knows, with any sort of hobby that you get into, this is advice that I take on myself. Um, if you're just getting into something and you don't necessarily know if you're gonna like it or not, you don't wanna spend a ton of money doing it, um, <laughs> you know? Um, it kind of feels bad if you put a lot of money into something and you figure out that you don't even really like doing. I'm gonna show you some cheaper materials that will work in the short term um, to give you a feel for what acrylic painting is gonna be like without breaking the bank. So I have my basket full of items here that we're gonna be talking about today. So the first thing that we're gonna talk about are going to be paints. Um, so these are, of course, what brings us all to the <laughs> um, medium in general is gonna be the medium itself. So with acrylic paints, you have a ton of different options. So you have some that are gonna be on the higher end of the spectrum. These are gonna be paints like in the Golden series. So these paints are absolutely gorgeous. They are super heavily pigmented, but these are also incredibly expensive. Um, as you can see, this is a very small tube. It's actually two fluid ounces worth of paint. And these can run you anywhere between like nine to $14, depending on where you're located and also depending on the kind of paint that you want. So you don't wanna start off with these paints because this is a massive investment. Again, at lowest, you're getting like $9 for one of these tubes, which is not gonna last you too long. But don't get discouraged because there are plenty of beautiful paints that are on the lower end of the cost spectrum that you can always go for. So these are gonna be paints like Amsterdam, the Blick Studio Acrylic Series, which this one might be more local for me because we do have a Blick Studio Arts um, in my neighborhood. And then Liquitex, <laughs> and then Liquitex Paints. So of these three, the one that is actually going to be the one that I would recommend, it would probably be the Amsterdam Series. The reason why is that Amsterdam comes in just a ridiculous amount of uh, color. Just looking at the paints that I have, I have the most of Amsterdam. This is just a small selection of the paints that I have for them. Um, you get like a just wonderful shade of colors with this series and it's the cheapest out of like the mid-level uh, paints that I have seen. So Liquitex is actually one of the first paints that I've ever used as an acrylic painter. I think it may have actually been the first if I'm thinking correctly. So yeah, Liquitex was the first. Um, if you're looking at these two paints, um, Liquitex is slightly smaller on average than, you know, the standard paint for Amsterdam. I believe it's, yeah, 118, let's see, 118 milliliters to 120. And this one would run you like a dollar or two cheaper than it would for Liquitex. So you're saving on the amount of paint and also you're saving just on, you know, dollars wise. This may seem like a bit of a tedious detail, but say you want to buy like 20 different <laughs> shades of paint, those little, you know, nickels and dimes, they're gonna definitely save you in the long term. Yeah, if I was gonna go with any, I'd probably say Amsterdam to get started with. Now, of course, there's everyone's um, kind of go-to paint whenever they really just need something right now that's gonna be like your speedball paints. I, uh, <laughs> I have a very complicated relationship with speedball. Um, these are paints that I've definitely gone to if like I look around the paint store and there's no other paints But there's a bunch of speedball paint um, This is also a paint that I've gone to when I've had like literally no amount of money, but I really needed paint um, for a project um, So it's definitely a very handy uh, set of paints But what I've noticed is that these ones um, like the texture and the opacity uh, of these paints are gonna be a little bit less than some of the more expensive paints. So this will only be like maybe three or four dollars depending on where you live. I would say if you really wanna get the experience of what an acrylic paint really feels like, I would probably go for Amsterdam since it's the cheapest and it has the best quality out of the cheaper paint brands. And so next we're gonna go on to brushes. What I'm gonna push for is that instead of going for, you know, the cheapest brushes and getting a ton of them, I would say to choose uh, quality over quantity. The brushes that you're gonna see in like the economy brush section are gonna be brushes that are gonna have very hard bristles. 
Um, you're going to have to push on them to give a little bit of like leeway, a little bit of room. Um, I would say do not go for those brushes whatsoever. Um, I thought I maybe had one left over from my old paint days, but I actually looked around and I couldn't find any. That's how bad I disliked them. I didn't even keep them around. A pro to that kind of brush is that it's really easy to pick up and hold paint on that brush because it is so stiff. But the drawback is that you're gonna have a little bit less control on the canvas and it can make your brush strokes a little spotty since again, the bristles themselves are pretty stiff. What I would say to go for is a brush that is a bit softer. So I believe this is called a red sable brush. Uh, you want a brush that has really soft bristles. What this does is that it gives you way more control on the canvas. And so as you're painting, you can kind of, I don't know if you can see, but as I'm turning this, the brush is completely responding to the movements that I'm making. And that's definitely something that you want in order to get a real acrylic paint feel. And in terms of the quantity of brushes, you really only need a few. So I picked out the four that I think are the most useful whenever you're getting started painting. These are also the paint brushes that I typically use most often. As you can see, there's like cracking in the paint there because I just use these so often. This one is actually like my top one. And as you can see, the paint is like completely gone. I would say these four are gonna be your best bet. Um, a brush like this is gonna cover uh, large surfaces while um, still giving you like ample control. And then for these three, these perform very specific jobs. So this one's gonna be for your small details, like say you wanna put like a glare on someone's eye or highlight on someone's skin. You're gonna wanna go for a brush like this that's a little bit smaller. Um, your main detail brush, or at least for me, this is my main detail brush, is gonna be this one in the middle. It's a bit thicker. Um, it gives me really good detail for things like blending in skin, for hair texture, for fur texture, things like that. And then this brush is really good for giving like nice angled lines, curves, you know, um, really fine uh, angular details. You're gonna get with this sort of angular brush here. So you really only need these four if you're just getting started. But say you're only working with very small canvases, then I would probably just go with these three for right now. And so in terms of palettes, you can literally go for the cheapest palette they have. Um, so this is like everyone's like, middle high school um arts palette uh you know this is like for watercolor for oil for acrylic um this is like the ultimate utilitarian palette this is probably gonna run you between like 59 to 79 cents per palette uh these are reusable so i have i don't even remember when i bought this like this could have been like five years old and i wouldn't know um you can reuse these time and time again with acrylic paint if you're gonna reuse it, just take off the top of this and let the paints dry out and then you can very easily just peel them off. And then you have a brand new palette that you can use. <laughs> the only drawback with a palette like this is that your paints are gonna dry out a little bit faster than it will with a bit of a more expensive palette like this where it's literally like locked in. But for your purposes, if you're just getting started with acrylic paint, a palette like this is perfectly fine. And again, as someone who's been painting for nine years, I still use these. So don't be afraid to grab a couple of these for literally like two bucks and you'll be good to go. And then canvases is where you would really save like basically all of the money. <laughs> if you've ever taken a look around your local art supply store, you'll see that canvases are super expensive, <laughs> like exhaustingly expensive. As you can see, I have one of those like super expensive canvases over there. That canvas, I don't even, I don't even want to think about how much that canvas is. Honestly, I don't, don't ask me. <laughs> but you do not need to do that for whenever you're just getting started. Um, you can still create very beautiful artworks using basically anything. Um, acrylic paint, because it is such a, an opaque, thick medium, you can, use it on basically whatever you want. Um, whenever I first started painting, um, a lot of what I would do was paint on just any random object that I would find. Like when I just got started, I know I was painting on like glass, on metal, <laughs> on uh, stone at one point. Uh, some of the largest paintings that I have are actually painted on plywood. So those are gonna be paintings like 2033, Sunrise and Consumption, which I'll put like just kind of somewhere around on this video. If you're going to paint on surfaces that aren't, you know, professional canvas, you want to use a product like this. It's called Gesso. Uh, what 
gesso is to acrylic paint is basically what you know primer is to house paint um, whenever you're painting like the interior walls of a house this just primes the surface to make sure that it is perfectly receptible for acrylic paint before you get started these typically are also on the cheaper end this bottle is probably a little bit more expensive like in the 20 25 dollar range but these come in various different sizes you can even get some for like five bucks in some places um so yeah if you're gonna paint on you know any sort of reclaimed surface that you find just make sure that you're using gesso first and it'll be perfectly fine so you have a few options whenever it comes to painting on professional surfaces um the one that and this is more of a personal preference i will admit up front um, so painting on acrylic paper is an option. You can also use multimedia paper. I typically don't like it because I like thicker surfaces to paint on just because acrylic paint is such a heavy medium. Um, and so I really don't have a lot of luck with uh, acrylic paper, but this is an option. But also give it a shot, you know, if you're getting more comfortable with the medium, give acrylic paper a shot. See if you like a bit of a thinner surface. Uh, with every artist, it's going to be different. Um, and that doesn't mean that you're wrong. It just means that, you know, we have different ways of doing things and that's perfectly okay. <laughs> so you have um, surfaces like gallery wrapped canvas. Uh, this is when the canvas is wrapped around a wooden frame as you can see here. The other option that you have is with a canvas board. So unlike the gallery wrapped canvas where it's basically this like free bit of canvas here in the center, gallery wrapped canvas is completely connected to, um, I actually don't know what the material on the inside of canvas board is. Um, but it's like a material that's a bit stiffer than cardboard, a bit more durable. Uh, this is actually probably gonna be your cheapest option. So even something like this really small um, gallery wrapped canvas is gonna be a few dollars more than it's gonna be for this. This gives you a really durable surface that you can start off on. So you can kind of like adjust your br brush strokes, really get a good feel for um, what painting with acrylic paint feels like. Both of these kinds of canvases usually come in like super value packs like you can see here where you're getting a ton of separate canvases in one deep and again i've been painting for nine years and i still use these so do not feel embarrassed about getting these i mean we all you know we're all artists none of us have a ton of money unless you're like super up there so do not feel guilty for getting like deals on canvases these canvases are still perfectly fine depending you may have to be careful on the actual wrapping of the canvas but most of the time like I've never had a problem with these canvases they've worked just as well as the super expensive canvases that I've gotten um and you know if you just want to have a surface to work on just you know have a couple of these at your disposal and you can paint whenever and it's perfectly fine I hope this video helped you to figure out what different kinds of materials that you can have whenever you're just getting started out. I'm going to put links in the description for all of the different products that I mentioned. Um, I think in the future I'm going to do an extended video on different paints specifically because there's a lot of information that I really couldn't get in this video about paints that I would like to talk about. So if you would like to hear me talk about paints in a separate video, um, first subscribe to my channel and also just let me know in the comments if there's any brand in particular um, that you either want me to review or just talk about uh, my experiences with them. Good luck on starting your paint journey. I'm so excited. Also, like, you know, uh, my Instagram is BGAPGH. Please send me, like, your beginner, like, paint projects because I really want to see um, what you all create. Um, I promise I'm super nice. I'm not going to judge it. You know, if you think it looks bad, I'm probably going to think it looks great because I'm just excited whenever people, like, you know get into acrylic painting so just send me them and like share like you know your experiences how you felt if you like the paints that i recommended that's definitely something i want to know um so yeah thank you again um as always you are enough and take care bye <laughs> hi y'all thank you for watching i hope you enjoyed this video be sure to like this down below and to subscribe to my channel for more videos like this in the future catch you later